Over the last week, there were several viral news stories about nurses who got really sick from COVID-19 and actually died, unfortunately. So in this video, what I would like to do is talk about what's missing from these news stories. Again, it's kind of a recurring theme. The media talks a lot about people who die, people who got really sick, and people who wish they were vaccinated. And in these stories, what we're hearing a lot about is how the nurses' training didn't prevent them from vaccine misinformation. While that can be true, and perhaps the nurses' training didn't emphasize risk stratification for overweight individuals or obese individuals or people who have underlying health conditions, which I think is, is part of, it should be part of the vaccine educational plan, is to focus on age and risk stratification. You know, there is a consequence to un sort of custom tailored policies. You know, for example, when we told everyone to stay in their home and stay in their house and they can never go outside, we closed beaches and parks and gyms and we started arresting mothers for walking their kids outside. Okay, that's when you got resistance to policies because irrational policies, people say, well, what's the point of these policies? And they rebel against it. So when you start to say that every single person, no matter what, even your children now, ages five to 11, need to get the shot, okay? You start to scratch your head and go, wait a minute, we've already had COVID, we've already had antibodies, we're not at high risk for severe disease. So why do we need to be part of this when there's a lot of people who are at higher risk and are still unvaccinated? Again, if we could use a more customized, use a scalpel instead of a sledgehammer, I honestly think vaccine rates would be higher and the hospitals would not be so overfilled because again unspecific policies create resistance and it seems that in this particular instance that is true now again i'm not anti-vaccination but i do believe that we should account for natural immunity okay and it's not being accounted for by the pundits that you see on television in fact they're totally discounting that which is unfortunate but Again, the title from the CNN story is, a nurse's training didn't protect her from vaccine misinformation. It cost her her life. Well, it turns out that this individual, and again, bless her heart, I'm not here to fat shame. I'm not here to say anything negative or mean about her. But she also has something that is common in these stories. She's overweight. She's clearly overweight. And it turns out that she feeds her kids hyperpalatable ultra-processed junk food. So as you can see in these images, okay, Again, I'm not saying that she deserved it. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just getting us to say, well, you know what else her, her nurse training didn't uh, protect her from? From obesity. It didn't protect her from eating junk food. And let me just pause. For those of you that don't know, for the past, I don't know, gosh, I started in 2006 selling products and services to doctors. So I've been in healthcare settings, hospitals, uh, outpatient medical clinics, primary care doctors, specialists. I've been all over the country doing this, also in Canada. I've had times where, you know, as, as selling natural products, I would buy lunches at Whole Foods and natural food stores and get healthier options like low carb or keto or grain free or gluten free or whatever. I can't tell you how many times I've had doctors say, your food is too healthy for me. It's like, well, uh, excuse me, you're a physician. You're trying, shouldn't you be leading by example? I didn't say this because of course I'm trying to, you know, I'm the sales guy, right? But I'm like, I would call my mom after and be like, mom, you wouldn't believe it. I had a doctor's office tell me that the food is too healthy for them because they're used to eating freaking pizza and crap because this is what the drug reps give these doctors, the nurses and the medical assistants. I mean, with all due respect, they're the worst. Many of them are morbidly obese, okay? So you could, CNN could do a whole future story. The nurses training didn't protect them from obesity, from type 2 diabetes, from high blood pressure, from PCOS, from all of the conditions that you see. If you go to the ER or the ICU, you're going to see a high percentage of morbidly, of very overweight individuals that are working at the hospital, okay? What seems that also there's misinformation about how to actually be healthy stemming from the healthcare system itself. Where's the outrage about that misinformation? Because it turns out that misinformation about how you actually lose weight and, oh, you can eat muffins and Kit Kat bars and still be healthy as long as you don't eat too many calories. That is literally information. That's the info coming from medical textbooks, friends. Where's the outrage? CNN, why aren't you talking about that? MSNBC and People's Magazine, why aren't you talking about that? But instead, you focus on these news stories. And there was another news story about this lady from Alabama, a nurse, and actually, it's, it's, this one's more sad. Well, they're both sad. Because they're mothers, they have kids, they have families, they have people that care about them, they have jobs, they have all that, right? But unfortunately, they died from COVID. And they probably died from the fact that there's this burgeoning resistance because, again, we're not being told about the risk stratification in the age. It's clear that these vaccines reduce disease severity. 
hospitalization and death. That's inarguable. I know people say, well, they don't. They don't. Look, they do. Okay, friends. But again, we, we're getting resistance because we're being told that every single person plus your kids, pretty soon it'll be your dogs need these things. And we're never going to get out of this pandemic without that. Is, if that was true, then how is India having only 300 deaths per day while we average more than 2,200 deaths per day? While India has a population of 1.36 billion people, we only have 360 million friends, okay? Natural immunity should account for something. It should be part of the equation. It seems that in the data we've covered from Italy, from other various parts of the world, that show that insulin resistance and visceral adiposity lead to suboptimal vaccine effectiveness. Okay. So what I would like to do here, friends, is just finish off again this, this story from Alabama, this pregnant nurse. Um, she had the same unfortunate, tragic situation that Natalie had where she got so sick, she actually died, okay? But as you can see in these images, this nurse is also, she's overweight. And I'm not trying to be a jerk here, friends, but this is just the reality of the situation. So we should be equally mad at the nursing profession for not preventing obesity and overweight. And why, as a nurse, why isn't she exercising? You can tell from these images, she doesn't exercise. I can, look, I've been in and out of gyms for the past 25 years. She doesn't exercise. Exercise should be, is primary care. This is frontline uh, preventative medicine. Okay. So with that said, friends, before we get to the video with Natalie's brother, I just want to welcome you back. It's Mike Mutzel. I'm grateful that you're here. If you're enjoying this video, please hit that like button. Be sure to leave a comment below. That helps the algorithm. Okay. Where's the outrage for the nursing profession? As this article says, a nurse's training didn't protect her from vaccine misinformation. While that can be true, you know what also can be true at the same time? The nurse's training didn't protect her from being overweight or obese. The nurse's training didn't protect her from feeding her kids ultra-processed, hyper-palatable junk food that are going to cause them to be overweight and obese. So here is uh, Natalie's brother feeding the children, and this is why I suspect that the nurse's training didn't prevent her from learning what really whole real food and preventing uh, chronic disease by way of, of nutrition. Uh, her nurse's training failed her. And so here we go with the brother that by God's grace is taking care of these children, which is phenomenal. But here's the food offerings that he's giving to these young kids. Do you guys want eggos? Do you want chocolate milk? All right. Now left to raise his niece and nephew. Right. A tragic call. His sister had died. I was destroyed. I, I didn't know what's going to happen with these two beautiful little children. He was also grappling with something else. His 71-year-old unvaccinated mother had also gotten COVID and was coming out of a medically induced coma. Kids, what do you want? Do you want Eggos? Okay, we know Eggos is basically, it's, it's corn and, and refined wheat, and you put the hyper palatable refined sugar on it, a fake uh, maple syrup, right? And then do you want chocolate milk? We know what chocolate milk is. Chocolate milk is milk with added sugar, okay? So presumably these are in the household, whether they're accustomed to eating this on a regular basis, or he's in the, the ch children's household where his sister uh, used to live, and those are the foods that are available. We don't really know all the details, but Suffice it to say, you know, why isn't Dr. Gupta on CNN? He's a medical doctor, by the way. Why didn't he say anything in the article? Well, maybe the kids, you know, shouldn't be having chocolate milk and eggos uh, when mom, who had apparently a, a challenge with body composition and, and weight and exercise insufficiency, um, just died. Maybe we ought to reverse the course of the chronic disease predisposition in our family. You know, again, this can be said in a constructive educational way. And so I think, again, the moral thing to do here is to address these underlying health issues and not continue to ignore them and pretend that they're not a major issue. Again, I want to be clear. Vaccinations do save lives. We know that, friends. I know there is misinformation out there about uh, the protectiveness of these vaccines, but there is also some unintended harm in these individuals. So if we could have a better way of stratifying genetic predisposition or underlying health issues that might lead to increased risk of having outcomes and then, you know, have a little bit more stratified approach. I think that's just all anyone is asking here is, is to have a more nuanced perspective uh, on, on these issues and so forth and stratifying based on risk factors and age. When are we going to have that conversation? When are we going to start to address that? Because in my estimation, that's a bigger problem. Also, because we know that vaccine efficacy as we talked about from that uh, paper over in Italy that found that healthcare workers with increased visceral fat, smoking status, and high blood pressure were at increased risk for having suboptimal levels of antibodies after immunization. So it turns out that you know your health status impacts the efficacy or the effectiveness of the vaccines. That should be part of the message as well. Uh, so 
I think we can all do better here. I wish nothing but the best for these families. And as we finish off here, what are some things, again, that we can do, that we can inspire, and how can we can inspire people uh, you know, to, to make better choices? Well, we know that just simple things like time-restricted feeding or intermittent fasting, a simple way, a simple you know, non-invasive way to help to reduce body fat. Uh, over the course of eight weeks, several studies have found about six pounds of weight loss, not even changing any calorie counting or doing any of that. So you can start by just cutting off your feeding window earlier. Maybe you eat, instead of getting up and having breakfast, uh, you wait until 10 or 11 and then you stop and have an early dinner, maybe at 6 or 7 p.m. at the latest. So you're fasting for, say, you know, 16 or 18 hours a day. Uh, we know that walking, especially walking after a meal, can increase fat oxidation, can lower post-meal glucose. We know that getting to bed at the same time every single day and adhering to some consistency with your body's circadian clock system and circadian rhythms can have a lot of benefits. Uh, we know that resistance training at least two days per week can have a lot of benefits independent of any weight loss. And so we know that as you get more overweight, uh, there's all these different immune cells that go in and around these fat cells, and then there's leptin changes. Leptin drives the immune system, creates this, all these challenges. So there's a lot of things that can be done, friends. Um, and why aren't these part of the conversation? What Again, is why isn't the nursing profession doing anything to address this? So there's so many different things that we can and should be doing, and we should be talking about, friends, but we're not. We're ignoring these things. And I think it's time that we bring these into the conversation in terms of, you know, if we're serious about saving lives, then we should be serious about lifestyle medicine and nutrition and exercise. I mean, this should be front page of all major news networks and television and uh, articles. Excuse me. So let's encourage our friends and family to make healthier uh, choices and to take simple measures to improve their glycemic variability, to reduce their inflammatory tone in their body, to improve capillary density and respiratory function by way of exercise and periodic burst training and resistance training, all of that. There's so many things that we can and should be doing that we're not talking about. We're missing the opportunity to encourage exercise as a primary tool to support immune system health and reduce chronic disease risk factors. We're, we're missing out on this window of opportunity where they were emotionally ready to ditch the foods that they were addicted to, right? I mean, again, so many people have changed their behaviors uh, and, and introduced new habits into their life, but they haven't ditched the old habits that are actually making them vulnerable. And that's been the frustrating thing. It's not, you know, people say, Mike, you know, you're spreading misinformation. It's like, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm trying to motivate people to make sustainable lasting changes, you know, that can help prevent future illnesses, not just this one illness, okay? So that's why we're doing this. That's why I hope that you can share this with your friends and family, that we can encourage people to make healthy living great again. I know, who would have ever thought that it would matter, uh, but now we have this the impetus, and now hopefully we can get people when they're ready because it's hard to stop eating cookies and ice cream and drinking six packs of beer and smoking cigarettes and not exercising. Like, I get it. I've been overweight before. I've, I've, I used to work at Jack in the Box. Friends, I used to work at a Jack in the Box. That was my, one of my first jobs. I used to eat fried chicken and drink milkshakes all day, every single day. I used to live an unhealthy lifestyle. I, my cheeks and face like were so fat and so red. I had a belly. And I got, I just one day was like, you know, I don't, I want to start working out. I don't want to look like this. What, like, what am I doing to myself? This is stupid, right? And of course, I have influence from my dad and my parents, my mom, you know, um, being around gyms and they work out themselves. So I have good role modeling and things like that. So I definitely did have influence there. But it was, it was me that just said, look, I'm done with this. I don't want to live like this anymore. I want to start to feel better, move better. Uh, and you can change your body uh, so quickly, friends, with these natural solutions. I mean, it's insane how malleable and how your body can receive these messages, these new signals from exercise, from good nutrition, from sleep, from stress management, and manifest those changes into adaptations that make you healthier and more resilient. So that's the message that we should be sharing. Uh, and, and I think it's a shame that we're not, especially while people are emotionally ready. So friends, I'm grateful that you tuned all the way in. That really means a lot to me. If you enjoyed this over on iTunes, you can please leave us a little bit of feedback that goes a long way since you're still here on YouTube. Hit that like button. Be sure to leave a comment below. Let's spread the message to make Americans healthy, metabolically healthy again. That would be amazing. And have a great rest of your day. We'll catch you all soon. Have a good one. Bye now.